Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I have, I think this one's gonna be pretty short and sweet and to the point. I have acquired a few new plants over the last, I wanna say two to three weeks. And I kinda just, before I repot them and twiddle with them, I just kinda wanted to show you guys what they were because I am very excited about them. Uh, they are mostly anthurium with the exception of one. So let's start with the smallest first. This one was actually an unexpected gift from my friend JR. I purchased a plant from him, which I will show you in a bit. And he surprised me with this little tiny cutie. What this is, is an anthurium crystal hope crossed with an anthurium uh, dark form for Getty eye. But it's looking really, really cute already. I am hoping that it takes more of the Crystal Hope features because I love my Anthurium Brielle so much. If you guys don't know who the Brielle is, I will show you who it is here. I was surprised at how much I have grown to love this thing because typically I like the really dark Anthurium, um, but I feel like with the addition, not the addition, because of the Crystallinum, I have appreciated a lot of the really silvery uh anthurium as well but the brielle just is so stunning and i just every day i just like gawk at her and i just love her so much so i am hoping that this little thing takes more after mom of course i wouldn't be mad if it had forgetty eye traits but i'm really just kind of hoping for a really silvery plant so you can see it's just in a mix of moss and perlite and the roots are starting to poke out now, so I'm going to get it upsized. So thank you so much, JR, for that if you are watching. Um, the second one is another super, super exciting acquisition. I was not expecting to add this to my collection um, ever. Uh, so my friend Jose and Lauren, they collaborated on this cross. This is an Ethereum King of Spades crossed with the Luxurians. From what Lauren tells me, um, she says that her King of Spades doesn't make a really great mother. I think what she said is that when she does pollinate her plant, it either aborts or just like, yeah, it doesn't take. Um, harvest is very small, the seeds are weak, something along those lines, just she hasn't been really mothering it because she's not very confident in its, I guess, berry producing abilities. But um, when they did this cross, they got a very, very small handful of berries that took and um, germinated and grew and my goodness, it, they just, wow, they really took <laughs> the best features from both parents. So Lauren showed me hers a couple weeks ago and I just have not stopped thinking about it. And I was just like, man, it's so small right now. She's probably not gonna have cuttings for a while. Uh, so when this came up, my friend Jose, he's unfortunately, he's moving to Australia. So he's had to sell off his entire collection. And when I saw this one being offered, I was like, it's mine, it's mine, give her to me. And yeah, I'm just, in love with it like that red venation and just like the pebbliness of it it's incredible so i'm just super excited to see how this one um matures what it looks like once it's bigger um i'm really gonna try and baby this because i can easily see i can easily see this becoming one of my favorite lux hybrids the next one was actually a gift from jose i was not expecting this at all here we have a variegated Mikeins. So I have told you guys in the past that I had been wanting a variegated Mikeins, but I was just a little bit afraid of it because you don't really see very many big bushy healthy plants and I don't know if that's because people are chopping it back or they're just kind of aborting like this has it's just gone full Aurea and I don't know if these like how long these leaves will survive for but we've got one really promising stem on this side you can see there's a bit of variegation on this leaf that didn't fully unfurl and then the newest one that just came out has variegation i'm just really excited to have this i'm so grateful that he thought of me when um he gifted this to me and i just like 
I'm excited to have it. I'm excited to grow it, observe it, kind of see what it likes, see if I can get it to grow nice and healthy. I am a bit nervous about it, but I don't know. I feel like with my experience with Mikan's, if it's not that different than what I'm used to, I feel like we should be okay. Um, but obviously I will keep you guys updated on this journey. So thank you, Jose, for that. And then the last one is one that I have been, I've really, I've been pining after this for a long time. I've owned it before it died. It was a very, very sad, tragic death. It was one of those losses that I had where I thought about it all the time and I really beat myself. I beat myself up about it. Um, and that is the dark form for Getty Eye. Uh, the story behind this is we, I think we imported these from Equigenera a couple years ago, and I can't remember if these were in the photos or if we thought we were just getting regular for Getty Eye, but when we got them and saw these, we were floored. And yeah, we all had a little piece at one point. I don't know, we sold a bunch, I guess, you know, at the time, I guess we didn't really know how hard they would be to come by. Um, so yeah, like when mine died, I was just so sad because it was one of my favorite Anthurium. The emergent leaf is incredible. It's got this texture that's unlike any other. Hopefully I can find the picture um, I took of one of my emergent leaves that I had at the time. And I just remember thinking like, geez, what a special, special Anthurium. And so when my friend JR purged this, at an amazing price. I knew I had to snag it. I was honestly willing to pay anything. I know I said that I wasn't spending money on Ethereum or plants anymore, like big money, but this is one where I just, I felt like it was worth it. So hopefully we have a better time uh, this go around. I am going to use all the tricks um, up my sleeve that I've learned over the years with Ethereum since I've owned it before and hopefully she likes me. So this one is also growing in moss and perlite, very root bound. He did say this was a top cutting. I don't know how big the stem is. Could be really small, it could be really big. So we will just have to see. Um, but I wanna kind of uncover what's in here. It's been at my house now for about, how long have I had this? A week? I think I've had this about a week now and um, yeah, it seems fine. I think he was growing this in ambient conditions. So we shouldn't in theory have any issues with acclimatization. I am gonna leave it in my plant room for a while since it's a little bit brighter in here and I wanna make sure that it gets enough light while it's transitioning to its new substrate. Yeah, we are just going to start repotting and it's not gonna be a repot and chat or anything. We're just gonna just gonna kind of take you through the process. Okay. Slide my nifty little table over. I think we will um, just go with smallest to largest. I usually have to work up the courage to do the really big ones um, in these repot and chat, not repot and chats, but when I'm filming a repot. So I think we will do this crystal hope first before these roots dry out. So my vessel of choice for the Crystal Hope um, Dark Forgetty, <laughs> Dark Forgetty, Dark Forgetty Eye is this one. I would say a pretty decent size jump, not the hugest. I could probably go a little bit bigger, but I'm I don't know why. I think I'm I think I'm gonna start a little bit smaller, and I'm going to get it into my Aeroid mix, not my Aeroid mix, my um, Anthuria mix, which is this guy over here. I need a spoon. I don't have anything. I'm not prepared for this at all. I'm also going to be inoculating today with TPS Billions. So let's see what's in here. I usually have two tables set up, but I only have one today. So hopefully nothing goes toppling off this table. Anyway, guys, uh, when is this going up? February? My goodness, we're in February already. It's actually still January in my world right now. I'm trying to get ahead in terms of filming. I'm trying to get filmed up until March um, as early as possible because 
I'm scheduled to have my baby shower in California in March and I want to go for at least two weeks if I can three would be great just because I really want to spend time with my niece and nephew before Archie gets here and Millie has just been so sweet and like begging me she's like begging me to come she's like I know you live really far but can you come to my house and I just get so sad like I am glad that she understands that I'm far and it's it's not that I don't visit her because I don't want to it's like just like a distance thing you know but yeah I just I want to spend as much time with her as possible before the little guy is here I'm gonna do a bit of Lekka down at the bottom um, but yeah, do, does anyone else feel, I don't know why it's like this every single year. I don't know if it's a mental thing, but like, doesn't it feel like once the new year hits, January just kind of flies by and then the rest of the year goes kind of slower? I don't know. There's something about January that I just, it just, I blink and it's gone. Anyway, um, I think I told you guys a few weeks ago, maybe in my week of that I had, oh, I got them that I'd been like passing out. <laughs> I passed out at my 20 week ultrasound, but I chalked that one up to just being on my back for too long because I'm not really going on my back anymore ever since I hit 20 weeks or actually ever since I hit 18 weeks, I stopped going on my back. Um, and so yeah, I was laying there for like 30, 40 minutes on my back and I, I thought that was why I passed out. But then about a week later, I went for a walk with Vince. Like it was a very leisurely, slow paced walk around the neighborhood with Vince. It wasn't even that long. It was probably like a 15 minute walk at most. And yeah, I almost fainted again when I got home. And then uh, yesterday, so when I told my OB that I've just been randomly fainting or wanting to faint they're like well that's not like super normal so like let's go do like a blood sugar test and run you um a heart like an ekg like just to make sure my heart's okay because i've been having heart palpitations uh, ever since i've been pregnant which is not really normal for me so i went to my appointment yesterday they didn't have parking in the parking lot, so I, I parked like a block away. And again, a very leisurely walk. It was probably like a seven minute walk at most. No hills, nothing. And um, I got to my appointment and I almost fainted again, twice. Almost fainted the first time, stepped out, felt fine after getting some cold air, went back in five minutes go by and I'm losing vision again. So I just left, like I just, I didn't even do my tests. Freaking went there for nothing. Um, I had to wait it out a little bit before I could drive home, but just really strange. I mean, it seems like it is brought on by when my heart rate goes up because obviously I had walked from my car to the clinic, but then I was fine walking back from the clinic to my car and then driving home, I don't know. It's just, it's been very strange. So I hope that I can get some answers soon, but I told Vince that he's probably gonna have to take me because I can't risk almost fainting again and being by myself. But of course I wanna figure out, like I wanna rule out any heart things or blood sugar things. It's not iron because I had my blood test done a little while ago and my iron was actually quite high. Um, so yeah, it's not that. I thought I was like I wish it could I wish I could say it was iron because then that's just like an easy fix of my iron and good to go but no it's not that all right so now I think I do think that this was a good size for this one because the root system was quite small I did break off the tiniest little root on accident where did it go it was like the smallest little thing it was one that was like sticking out of the 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 drainage hole anyway um yeah so this one is done that was easy peasy easy peasy lemon squeezy let's do this guy the king of spades king of spades lux uh, i feel like i'm always so far when i'm repotting i was like did i inoculate i did i did i'm scared of this one the stem is so so tiny Stop. 
chiffon up at the top, it looks like, and then tree fern fiber as a substrate amended with a tiny bit of, it looks like, a uh, pawn as well. Whoa, I flicked a pawn really hard. Okay, I don't want to break the roots. I don't see a ton of roots on the sides. I can see one. Oh, two. Not break this. The dad of this plant is so nice. I got to see it in person before it was sold. I'll plug in a photo of of me with it. And yeah, it's so majestic. It's so bushy too. I feel like it's gonna be years before my lux is that big. Mine is like not really growing that much. I've had two leaves since I got it as a stump cutting and both leaves are so teeny, teeny, tiny. Are Luxes fast growers for you guys? Or like, what's your experience with Lux? Cause I, yeah, I don't know anything about them. Okay, this root system is a lot bigger than the Crystal Hope was. It's looking good, looking healthy. Um, I can see the beginnings of a new root on the stem. So it's good that I'm repotting cause I want to get it buried deeper in a pot and I was gonna so I have two choices I can go with the same pot size that I did for the crystal hope or I can go bigger and I'm kind of thinking I want to go with this one I know it's crazy but we're doing the pot up method I'm gonna do Lekka down at the bottom I just feel like it's gonna outgrow this like really fast okay I still get nervous. I still get really nervous doing the pot up method. This is still something that's like new to me. Historically, I didn't really follow a lot of those, you know, like the commandments of plant care, plant parenthood, and they say, don't size up too big, like only go one or two sizes larger at most. And I followed that to a T. I was like, yep, yeah, that makes sense. I don't want root rot. You know, I want my root system to be somewhat equal to the pot size and it, yeah that's just what i had done um but i wasn't really seeing a ton of leaf size growth the way that um i was seeing online seeing with my friends and so gotta switch things up sometimes and so far so good i mentioned this in another video there's been a little bit of loss with some of them that have been upsized into larger pots. And uh, it's mostly because of, I think, a light thing. The environment wasn't adequate for the size of the pot and how much moisture was being stored in the pot at that, like, at one given time. So just had to tweak a few things. It's definitely a learning experience or there's a learning curve. For sure but i think overall it's been a really good experience i feel like the roots on this shouldn't have that hard of a time adjusting considering it's going from tree fern fiber to a tree fern fiber soil mix so hopefully all is good i am going to still keep this in my tent that's where i've had it since i brought it home my friend Jose was growing it in his tent and I, I do think this is going to be one of those ones that stay in there for a bit longer maybe than some of them would just because it's so small and until I have enough stem as insurance if anything goes wrong I really am just going to baby this thing just in case because so little seeds came out of this and I don't want to be the one person that <laughs> that killed theirs before I could like give a cutting to someone. I told Alice I'm just gonna start giving her butt cuts of all of my Ethereum so that we have insurance just in case something goes wrong in my care. I've said this time and time again, but I still plan to be very hands-on with my plants once Archie is here, but you know, I think that's me being very optimistic with my energy, with my postpartum, with how crazy it is to have a newborn so just in case you know i get behind on plant care i would just feel better if some of 
the more um, high ticket <laughs> plants in my collection have a butt cut somewhere in case things go wrong at my house. But I really, I don't think that I'm gonna be shy in asking my friends to take plants if I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed. Okay, she's in. I'm not gonna pack her too tightly. I just kind of want her to be nice and comfy in there. I don't want it to be waterlogged. I don't want it to hold on to too much water at once, even though it is in the tent. And I really should make a new tag, but she's lazy today. Okay, everybody say a prayer to the plant gods and wish her well. I really don't know what the plan is for the Smikins. I don't, I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna attempt the climbing thing. It kind of seems like a lot of people growing the variegated mikins um, are putting it on a pole, but I am a trailing mikins kind of girl and I just don't see myself wanting a climbing mikins. So, I guess first things first is see what kind of root system we're working with. There are two cuttings in here. A few old dead roots that I'm gonna pluck off because we don't want those anymore. But overall, working with a really great root system. So here's the thing. I am, I'm used to growing mikins in pond and I've had really, really good uh, success growing Mikins in pond. The one mikins that I do have in soil, it dries out so fast and I hate it. I just, whoa, why do I keep flicking things everywhere? I just feel more comfortable in pond, but I'm wondering, is it, is it worth the risk of transitioning? I don't know. What would you guys do? What would you do? Cause I could also do, this mix with tree fern fiber, which is totally unnecessary for micans, in my opinion. I'm thinking either pawn or an aeroid mix. Roots are really tiny. I do worry about transition shock. At the same time, we've got enough stem if things go wrong and I need to chop. But I, my gut is just saying pawn. I just, I feel more comfortable with the micans in pawn, so. That is what we're gonna do. But now a vessel. We're not gonna go too big for this plant because I do wanna establish a nice healthy pond root system. Just rolling around everywhere. <laughs> I filmed another video before this, so I'm a little low energy. I was gonna try and film one more video after this, but I don't think I have it in me. I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm like a corpse trying to keep my eyes open. Okay, so we've got my pawn here right now. I'm using Ina's pawn mix, which I like to call party pawn. Uh, some people have commented about the price, how it is more expensive, but again, it's a it's a hand mixed small batch of pawn. And honestly, if you ask me to mix you a batch of pawn, it's not going to be cheap because that's a lot of work. But it's good if like, you know, you can't get your hands on Lachuz a Pawn brand pawn because they're always sold out for whatever reason. And if you just kind of need something for a, uh, a quick repot or something that's overdue for a repot, this is a good option. And if you're wondering, no, I don't get any, like I don't make money from selling you guys or promoting Ina's Pawn. She did gift this to me, but uh, yeah, I don't have like an affiliate link or anything. I just think it looks way funner than regular Pawn. Okay, so it's gonna look wild at first. Like it's gonna look really funky. That's usually how it goes with getting a trailing pot started, but you kind of just have to go through the growing pains to get where you wanna be. My Rehab Mikins is starting to look really good. I don't know if you can see her back here, but she's filling in really nicely. She does have a lot of spots though. I don't know what that's about. Probably 
I want to say spider mites, but I haven't seen any spider mites. But if you guys look at the new leaves, I'll just I'll insert a photo. They're like all spotty, but I'm just happy to see growth. Honestly, it's just yeah, she's coming back. She's coming back. I give it till the end of the year where she's looking proper again. But that had to be probably one of my most devastating <laughs> losses of 2023 for sure. I mean, luckily I didn't lose her completely. I was able to obviously save her stems. But just in terms of where I was at the beginning of 2023 with her and where we ended up, that was not that was not a happy a happy story. She had a rough year for sure. I'm feeling I'm not feeling super confident about this transition. I don't know why. Sometimes I'm like, oh, she's gonna be great. Um, and then sometimes like this, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if she's gonna be like this. But obviously, I'm gonna be hopeful. I'm gonna monitor her and I do think I'm still gonna keep this. I know it seems weird, but I am gonna still keep this in my tent for probably another few weeks until maybe I see some nice roots growing on the outside of it and then I'll probably move it to my shelf out in the living room because that's where I plan to, to grow her long term. So this one's done. Everyone, again, a little prayer, please. I'm not used to filming such short repots, but I am gonna have to be sprinkling in some shorter videos more often over the next few weeks if I want to get filmed up until March just feels wrong for me to post a video less than an hour. I don't know why. I'm like, should I even put this up? It's not even an hour long. What's the point? Okay, so what I'm hoping for is a longer stem. That would be cool, just as insurance, I guess. I told Alice I want to give her a butt cut of this just in case anything goes wrong. But if it's too small to be chopped, then I'm not going to because it's not worth that risk of losing the whole thing just for a butt cut. JR is so good at growing Anthurium in moss. I used to grow Anthurium in moss before, but I feel like when I was, my pH was all wrong. But also at the same time, I was still growing Anthurium in greenhouses and some of you guys know my track record with that. So it could have been a few things. Okay, so from what I'm feeling, it's not like a little tiny chunk, but it's, I don't think it's gonna be long enough to chop. But at least we have a nice root system here. Oh my gosh, I'm getting moss everywhere. I'm happy this isn't like super crazy root bound in here. You can see one rotted root. Not the end of the world. Okay, so I've got a few, a few rotted roots kind of in the center, but way more new healthy roots. So I'm just going to be chopping those off because I don't want them to continue to rot in my vessel. And I'm just going to wait to water this. Maybe I'll give it maybe two hours or something before I water it to kind of let things callous up a bit. I don't think my substrate is super damp. It's definitely long enough to chop, but I don't know if I want to. I think I might want to wait a little longer, maybe until the next repot. So just got to keep her alive long enough to get that insurance chop, but I think it's going to be okay. I'm way more confident in my abilities now growing in Ethereum than when I first owned this plant. So I'm trying to not let that experience scare me too much because I have to remember I was a different plant parent back then than I am now. And we have to be positive, positive, positive. All right, let me show you what we are working with here. Incoming. So really nice root system, but you can see there are some roots that are starting to rot kind of down at the bottom 
where these stringy guys are so I'm just going to be doing a little bit of root trimming and then here is the stem it's about I want to say it's like four inches long or five inches long no no that's way too long <laughs> it's probably like three to four inches long like I probably could take a little tiny butt cut but no i'm not going to it's a little bit i'm i'm a little too afraid i think i'd rather let it grow a bit more and not stress it out more than it already has been with going from his house to mine so okay the vessel that i think i will be using i had an option between these two looking at the size of this root system now in this it just seems a little bit too small like this is what i would have done before but now i'm thinking this is probably a little bit more appropriate if i want to see some size growth so i'm gonna do some root chopping first where did i put my scissor oh i threw it over here and then i am gonna do like a down at the bottom too I find that um, I had rotted a lot of roots in these kinds of pots before because there's so many slits on the side. There's so much airflow that things dry out so fast. And yeah, I had killed a good amount of roots using those. There are a few questionable ones, but I'm just gonna leave it and kind of see what it does. Doing about this much leka at the bottom and I need my matcha, that's what I need. Hopefully I have enough soil here. Oh, I need a pokey stick, conflav it. I think this should be enough, should be enough, hopefully. I'm gonna add a tiny layer down at the bottom. Anyway, we are getting so close to spring. I'm so excited. We're almost about, are we like a month out? It's so close, I can taste it. We're getting longer days now. And next week in the forecast, allegedly, allegedly, we're getting more sun, which is like such a little treat here in Vancouver. I don't mind the, the rain. And I don't even mind the snow when I can stay home and not drive. Uh, I really, one thing I love, I've said this so many times, but one thing I love about living here opposed to living in California is that like you can really, really feel the seasons, you know, and enjoy the different seasons. But it's so nice in the middle of winter when we get like the rare sunny day and it's just so like just sunshine all day the plants can like absorb some of that sunlight and then when it goes back to being rainy the next day it's like you know we got our fix the day before and i just oh i love those those random days so hopefully we have more of those next week because i definitely need it i feel like my mental health has been or it was really good last year in 2023 not off to the greatest start here in 2024 unfortunately i have been having more anxiety and panic attacks whereas i didn't really have any for like months and i think it was that driving incident on ice that one day when we had a snowstorm that just like triggered something in my body because i haven't been my like i haven't been okay since then but we're dealing with it. I do think it's gonna help though once spring comes and the weather gives us a little bit more sunshine because that definitely makes such a difference in my mood. I also think I've just been having these moments of like, holy crap, I'm gonna be a parent and I panic a little bit. Just a lot of things. And it's probably pregnancy hormones too. But one thing I'm not looking forward to in the spring is that I need to repot this big behemoth behind me, this Thai constellation that 
I love it, but I don't know what I was thinking bringing it home. I don't know where it's gonna live once it grows like two more leaves. I don't have a pot big enough for it, nor am I brave enough to chop it. I don't know. I've been trying to find a garbage bin or something that's semi-opaque so I could still see what's going on in there because I just don't trust tie roots. But I can't find anything that's big enough. Ideally, I'd like maybe a 12 to 14 inch pot, but it's hard to find anything that's not black. Okay, I'm just gonna slam this down just to fill any gaps. I'm feeling good about this transition. I think it's really gonna enjoy having an organic mix opposed to living in just moss and perlite. That's the hope anyway. <laughs> I'm being optimistic. I have to be optimistic with this because I cannot, I cannot fail again this time. I won't allow it. I won't allow it. Whew, okay, okay, she's in. I think she's gonna be all right. I can see some roots on the side here so I can keep an eye to see if there's any new size growth or any new root growth. The second I see new roots, I am going to be ecstatic. I'm gonna be so happy. But for now, she's gonna live probably up here somewhere getting light from my Soltech lights. Anyway, you guys, that's gonna be it for today. A very, very short repot. I feel like I'm definitely gonna have to be sprinkling these in a little bit more, these shorter repots, so I hope you don't mind. But thank you guys for hanging out with me. I don't know if this is going up on a Wednesday or a Saturday, but whatever day it is, happy Wednesday or happy Saturday. Uh, thank you for being here. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you in the next one.